that started the process for disengagement and realignment. And as part of that process, we were required to go through a public comment period, which we have fulfilled that public comment period for 60 days. The disengagement plan was posted along with the resolution that you adopted back in October, and we have received public comments during that time. That uh, public comment time closed in December, and then we were required to post for an additional 30 days any comments that were actually received. We did receive five of those, and we have, for those that um, actually included a contact, we have reached out to them and worked with them to answer any questions that they may have or address or hear any concerns that they may have with realignment. And in addition to that, we have since that time developed a realignment committee that is working in the whole process of disengagement and realignment with the continuity of care, uh, which is the primary focus. That's the uh, plan in addition to the disengagement plan that is attached to this resolution. Uh, that's the original disengagement plan that you adopted and we posted back in October. The next plan is the continuity of services plan and that is the primary focus uh, of what the secretary of the Department of Human Services who has to give final authority to, to realign with partners will be looking for to make sure that there is no disruption in services whatsoever to the members and the providers that work in our um, managed care uh, LME MCO environment. And so basically uh, that continuity of services plan has a purpose, scope, service array. Um, it covers the realignment committee is listed toward the end and the members, uh, the provider network and the service authorizations. And basically this plan says that Partners Health Management has committed to ensure that all current providers currently serving and contracted and in good standing with Cardinal Innovations uh, and serving our county will be contracted with partners as well, if not already, and that they intend to honor consumer service authorizations, which is your members that receive the services, their annual plans and other documentation and decisions essential to ensure a smooth transition. The other part of the continuity of services plan, once we receive and it, we, we anticipate and hope to receive authority from the Secretary of Human Services to disengage, the realignment committee work will go into full swing to make sure that this continuity of services plan is uh, followed to, the, to its fullest. In addition, we will bring on, bringing on additional members, including Cardinal, someone from Cardinal to help us with this plan to make sure that anyone listed and rostered with Cardinal is transitioned over to partners. The next plan is the distribution of real property and uh, Mr. Rich Cook, our county attorney, worked with me to help develop the written plan for the real property and there is real property in Cabarrus County owned by Cardinal and so this plan has to outline how that um, is being addressed and what will be done with the real property. Uh, if we are permitted to disengage. Cardinal owns five pieces of real estate in Cabarrus County under the name uh, PBH, which stands for P Piedmont Behavioral Health, which was the original name of Cardinal uh, probably 15 plus years ago, of which is a class A office building and um, that they formerly used as their headquarters. It, that is located in Kannapolis on Milestone Drive. The Class A office building has a tax value of $16.6 million with no liens against it. And it is um, also has four other pieces of property uh, that are undeveloped commercial lots between the Class A building and Kannapolis Parkway right there on Milestone in front of the building. And it's kind of like a, a, the way it's arranged, it almost looks like a little campus. Each of those lots have a tax value of, of at least $312,000 a piece with no liens. So basically the, the Real, the distribution for real property um, outlines that we would work with Cardinal on if they wanted to sell that property. Um, we haven't listed any real interest in it at this point as far as it being a county building, but we would work with them 
to distribute that property or to sell that property if they so choose to do so. And so the property owned by Cardinal within Cabarrus County has no impact on the realignment efforts, but we do have to adopt as part of this resolution and part of the plan, acknowledging there is property in the county that can be up for distribution should they choose to sell it. The next plan is a financial liabilities plan. And basically, um, we affirm that there, and to our knowledge, there is no outstanding financial liabilities to Cardinal Innovations Healthcare. Uh, the county, if, if there is any within 30 days, we would work to uh, re request to resolve those and um, basically um, work through the process to amicably and promptly work with Cardinal to resolve any outstanding liabilities if there were any, but to our knowledge, there are none based on the research that Mr. Cook has done. So with the resolution, just to recap, there are four plans that go with the resolution and the next step, should you adopt the resolution tonight, is to submit our formal letter of request to disengage to the North Carolina Department of Human Services Secretary Mandy Cohen. We would attach all four of these plans along with a full packet that will go to her and she has 90 days to make a decision. We don't anticipate that she will take the full 90 days to do that. We have fulfilled all of the requirements that are outlined in the statute that Mike read and the North Carolina Administrative Code that requires that we have um, nine different measures met in order to be able to request the disengagement formally and we have met those.